In section 2.3, we're going to talk about continuity. Definition, a continuous function is one that is continuous at every point in its domain. For example, we have f of x equals 1 over x. In letter A, we're asked to graph the function, so let's graph 1 over x. Uh, this is what uh, 1 over x looks like, very roughly. Uh, we don't need an exact graph for it, just we're going to just get the general idea. Now, this graph is defined for all values except for 0. We cannot divide by 0. Uh, so when we say, is f of x a continuous function? The answer is yes, it is a continuous function because it's continuous everywhere it's defined. It's not defined at zero. It's not continuous at zero. Uh, therefore, it is a continuous function. Now, what would one look like that is not continuous? Well, we could draw one that looks like this, let's say. Now, this one is not continuous at zero, but zero is not in its domain. Uh, however, uh, if we called this, let's say, x equals 2, now this is a continuous, uh, a function that is not continuous because 2 is in the domain, it has a value for 2, but it is not continuous at that value. I'm going to erase this one because we're really not looking at that graph. In letter C, it says, is f of x continuous on negative 1 to 1? Well, negative 1 is about right there, and 1 is there, and so we're going to say, no, it is not continuous from negative 1 to 1, because there is a discontinuity at 0. There's no values there. Is f of x continuous at x equals 0? We've kind of already answered that. No. We're going to talk about the types of discontinuity, but first I want to give the definition of continuity at a point. The definition of continuity means that we have a limit, as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. In other words, let's say we have this function, and let's say it has a limit, and the limit maybe looks like that. Uh, if this was x equals 3 and y was 4, the lim there would be a limit at 3. The limit would be 4. Now, if we make f of 3 equal to 4, then we know that this function is continuous at that point. All right, let's, let's jump to types of discontinuity. As a matter of fact, the first, or a discontinuity, and the first discontinuity is a jump discontinuity. And a jump discontinuity looks something like this, where the function goes to one point, and then it jumps up to another point. There's a jump discontinuity. A removable discontinuity means we can fill in one point to make it continuous if we could assign a value. For example, if we had that little curve, an open dot, and then the curve continuing with uh, the same point. So now that's an open dot. So this is a removable discontinuity because to remove the discontinuity, all I'd have to do is fill that dot in. Matter of fact, if we put a dot up here, a point up there, this is still a removable discontinuity. And the last one we're going to talk about is an infinite discontinuity, and those are talking about asymptotes. So we have an asymptote here, and maybe the function looks like that. That's an infinite discontinuity because the graph is shooting up to infinity on the right and down to infinity, negative infinity on the left. Let's talk about the intermediate value theorem. It says if f is a continuous function on a to b, then f takes on every value between f of a and f of b. Now, what does that mean? If we had an, uh, x values of, let's say, 4 to 7, and this y value right here was maybe 6, and this y value up here is 12. If the function is continuous between 4 and 7, we will have every value between 6 and 12. So there's a value in here somewhere. There's an f of something between 4 and 7 that would equal, let's say, 7. There's a value of x somewhere that has a value of 8. There's a function value somewhere. There's f of something. Some x value would give us 9.43, let's say. 
So the function is going to take on every value between 6 and 12 as long as the function is continuous. Now we could have the values only 6 to 12 by drawing, let's say, a graph like that. We could have more than 6 to 12 by drawing a graph that goes clear up here and then back down. So we're not guaranteed anything outside of 6 to 12. We're just guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem that we will have all the values between 6 and 12. Now we have an example. The example says, is any number exactly one less than its square? So is any number exactly x squared minus 1? So we could have x squared uh, minus x minus 1 equals 0 by just minusing the x over. Now, is any number exactly one le less than its square? Well, let's pull out the graphing, uh, graphing calculator to decide this. All right, we have our graphing calculator. We're going to go to y equals. We have uh, x squared minus x minus 1. And if we graph that, we see that there is a value for 0 right there. So there's actually two values where this works. So is any number exactly 1 less than a square? Yes. In exercise 1 through 10, find the points of continuity and the points of discontinuity of the function. Identify each type of discontinuity. Well, we have y, y equals x plus 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. For this one, I'm going to factor the denominator. So we have x minus 3 and x minus 1. So there, the points of discontinuity, this function is not continuous at x equals 3 and x equals 1. And when you find a value that makes the denominator 0 of a rational function, you have found the vertical asymptotes. So each of these are infinite discontinuities. In number 6, we have y equals the third root of 2x minus 1. There are no problems with taking the third root. You can take the third root of any values you want. You can take the third root of positive values. You can take the third root of negative values. So there are no discontinuities. There are none for this one.